topic. Okay. Yeah. So just being the best behavior between now and okay.
John, can you hear us? Hey, anybody? Recording. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, Don Cushing is not here yet, um, and I don't know whether he's joining us remotely or in person, but either way, um, we can get through the first few things on the agenda pretty quickly anyway. So I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Today is the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Scarborough Town Council Communications Committee. Today is Wednesday, September 11th, and it is 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, in attendance today are myself, April Sider, and John Anderson, and again, um, maybe Dawn Cushing will be joining us. Allison is here um, as staff support, and we have Tom for a few minutes running the Zoom. Uh, as a reminder, Liam is gallivanting on vacation, being a lucky duck somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes, I think. I'm going off memory because I don't actually have yeah, to hold up. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the approval of the minutes from July 10th, 2024. John, do you want to make a motion? So moved. I will second that. Any comments or discussion? Okay. All those in favor? I guess I technically have to do roll call because you're on Zoom. So John Anderson? Yes. And show myself a beside there is a yes. Um Item four is town council communications planning. Um, because we had to cancel the August meeting, we already had some discussion about Councilor Corner articles. Um, for the next couple of weeks, we have um, Don Cushing submitting one for the September 15th. And I saw that he sent an email, um, but forgot the attachment. Um, and so I'm sure that that will be coming along in the next few minutes. Yeah, I can confirm that he spent a couple hours with Karen Martin yesterday. Mm -hmm. So getting background and content for his story. So I know he's working on it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. What was the topic of that one? It's going to be growth related, but it's not going to be kind of hard numbers, so to speak. It's going to be... Uh, in, She's going to help supply him with some background data. Uh, I think it's, he's going to offer some of his own experiences. Mm -hmm. And then it sounds like it might be a two-part thing. So we might follow okay. up at some point. Okay. Um, so for October 1st, I have myself down just as a placeholder um, because working backwards on the calendar, we wanted to give um, Councillor Katarina and Councillor Hamill an opportunity to write one before their terms uh, are over. And that leaves us with just three. And so if I do October 1st, um, Councillor Hamill can do October 15th and Councillor Katarina can do November 1st, as long as that mm -hmm. sounds reasonable. Yeah, and we may wanna, <clears throat> for the 15th one, November 15th, that's usually yeah. good to introduce the new counselors. And if we have three, Maybe just having them, instead of doing like a big article, they can just do like a small intro and we can do all of that just so that we have that planned out as well. I think that's a great idea. Um, and in terms of having a, a smooth transition from when we switch over the committees, because the communications committee kind of has to keep working in order to make sure we meet all of our deadlines, it's good to have that planning done um, before the election happens so that we can just kind of package what we have done and, and hand it off to the next to the next person and not have a gap. Um, do, do we want to then even go further? Because it takes time to fill committees to say 12-1 could be like the new chair, whoever that is, can... Like we can, we have, so we have the October, we have one more meeting, um, so we can talk about it in okay. October. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, in terms of just that long-term, um, and then the next thing I wanted to talk about in terms of long-term planning was getting in one more counselor corner live, um, and so I was going to put that on the agenda for future agenda items for October, so that we can get that planned for mm -hmm. the fall. One, one of the, the things I was, yeah. sorry, go ahead, Tom. I was just going to say, uh, unless there's a special meeting that you schedule in November, the new council would take seat and, and be effective uh, December 4th. So you will have that December 1st spot spot before the new council actually sits. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What were you going to say, John? For Councilor Corner Live, and again, we're, we have the finance conversation tomorrow on the capital plan. But one of the things I was thinking was, depending on timing-wise, 
would we want to use that Counselor Corner Live as a community forum to talk about priorities, prioritizing our capital investments and getting feedback on, you know, we have a lot that we want to do, but we need to prioritize the priorities. I love, I think Nick has coined that term. And I think that could be like, potentially the Counselor Corner Live is like, help us prioritize the priorities while we're kind of starting this process and give some feedback. I really like that. What time frame would that be? November or December? Um, well, we try and get it in before Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, so like the last week of October, probably time frame. Because I don't want to I don't want to conflate it with the election either. Yeah. But maybe and there's it, time in between the election and Thanksgiving break. Because Thanksgiving's really late this year. It is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So like mid November, maybe. Which I think would be good. And I think Tommy, I think it would be good to before we get too far to like have a forum that is again to guide the direction mm -hmm. we go. And I think we're getting emails from people about the community center. The school is about to kind of re-kick off. Mm -hmm. um, the library I know is going to be interested to know where they fit. So I think it's just a good thing we might want to try and fit in if we can. Again, not decisional, but just, hey, we're working on this thing and we need some feedback as we get started. So you want to participate and like tell us now early we can take that into consideration as we work through the process yeah so tomorrow finance it would, it's really the first pass so i expect and we're interested in, in feedback so there'll be time enough for at least one more finance meeting to maybe refine that a bit further that'd be good it could be very helpful for your council corner live to at least have something that people can review and React, react to. to perhaps yeah mm, yeah agree. and we will have had uh, the library director come we're planning on having him come to a council meeting right before i don't have him scheduled yet okay um i think i thought we we're going to try to push him off till the new council oh we thought okay. be that's good right that he would be able to introduce himself that's right. to that's the right. new council that he'll be working with that's right well, i think i think they still have some work to do too internally i'm as the liaison i kind of give them a heads up we're working on this and they're like they have some thoughts but they haven't really given too much thought in terms of what they would want to incorporate in this. And so there's still some time there too. Okay. I, I think that, I think that that timing of that will be really, will be good. And I think it's a topic that's engaging in terms of drawing a diverse group of people to, to have a successful night. So I think that that's a great idea. Um, so I'll put that on the agenda for October to solidify a date and kind of decide which, um, what we can do to provide any kind of supplement materials and stuff to the public for that. Okay. Um, any other town council communications planning that we need to do? No, if you need to. Okay. You can just shut down. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know if this falls under us or like who it falls under, but I know it's a passion thing for Councillor Cushing. Um, when we think of like new councillor onboarding. Like, is there maybe for our next meeting, potentially as an agenda topic, do we want to talk about how to properly or how we think? Because again, there will be three new people, which is pretty substantial. Um, how, like what communications and things they get from the council or from staff to just really help map that out to make sure that they understand like what the first couple months are going to look like. Um, particularly if they're very new. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think that the us as a committee, you know, with our range of experience and given that Councillor Cushing is new this year, um, could help facilitate a conversation with staff about maybe some things that um, we would like to see prepared and just given to kind of new council as a package. Cause I know mm -hmm. Tom has some things that he gives out and obviously Maine Municipal has that huge binder slash 400 page book that they give out, but just in terms of like, even just creating a checklist, um, you know, of all of our department heads and yeah, what materials you know, yeah. we could, I could reach out to some other towns and see if something like that already exists that we could pull from. That would be yeah, great. From a material standpoint. I think this is a good opportunity and timing for that. Yeah. And, it, and like also even that some... entails like in-person like visits, meeting with staff. Yeah. Like that. Cause that's where I know, like when I first came on board, it was great because the fire chief 
gave me a tour of the public safety building. And I think that's been a tradition that continues just so that people know like, hey, your first month, the yeah. fire chief is going to meet with you and and potentially give you a tour. And again, there's other things like that that we should encourage people as part of their onboarding to try and do. And some of it they're going to have to do on their own, but some of it just knowing like what staff or the council is going to proactively do to communicate, to engage with them, I think would be good. Yeah, I think that's great. So welcome, Councilor Cushing. We are talking about um, doing some planning for our October meeting. And one of the things that we were talking about putting on the agenda for October was having a discussion about onboarding new council members. Um, and that and idea is inspired by you and some of the comments that you've made that um, you know, you'd like to see. So I'll um, give credit for the inspiration. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I think my work here is done. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I had a conversation with Tom uh, about this a couple of weeks ago, and I think he was receptive to doing some basic stuff that wasn't there before. Yeah. Simple, you know, just names, phone numbers, introductions to department heads, rules of the road that aren't written anywhere, you know, those kinds of traditions and the like. So we sort of rattled off a list of things which are fairly obvious. Um, John, ages ago, you sent me something that Karen did, which was her own, uh, well, it's a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. which had a lot of that stuff in it, which was her uh, version of orienting mm -hmm. herself. Um, and I think that, um, I mean, it, it, it feels to me like um, Councillor Hamill would understand this. It's an HR thing. It's that notion of joining and how you join. Mm -hmm. And candidly, my experience was not particularly positive. If you stand up, raise your hand, sit down, it really wasn't any um, formal opportunity to get to know people before we dug right down into the business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that is something, I mean, in my experience, that type of thing, some kind of welcoming uh, social thing uh, has been important throughout my career. What if we hired anybody that, you know, we spent a lot of time in, investment and bring them into the organization and want to make them feel welcome and so forth. Most recent example I think was um, at uh, Eagle Main where um, they had a nice orientation program and they serve food at their meetings which always <laughs> makes me come. So all right so those are that's essentially the spirit of what I was suggesting. Perfect. So oh, I'm sorry I was late. Oh, that's okay. Twelve thirty in my book. So. No worries. No worries. Um. So Allison, I'm gonna ask, kind of as our staff person, mm -hmm. um, to help us kind of pull some things together to discuss for October. But obviously, you know, it doesn't have to be anything put together. We just kind of just a list of some things that yeah. staff thinks would be helpful or resources that we want to pull all in one place. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good to have something to pull together before October. And I guess from the counselor perspective, if I took some notes just briefly on what you were all talking about now, but like if there's um if there's anything else like that you think would have been helpful for you, like thinking back to your initial I can share with I can share with you the onboarding plan. That I worked with Karen on that Don mentioned. So you have that. Like the things in there are like Robert's Rules 101. But yeah. I know at one point I got something from Toadie eventually that I was like, I wish I had this at the beginning. So I understood because like you join and if you haven't been in a meeting like this, it's just very different how we run our meetings with Robert's Rules and what you're supposed to say and do. And so again, I think there's like little things like that that are in there that I think are just good reference documents for new people to just check out on their own. And then did you said you had the public safety tour. Did you ever meet with town staff? I did public safety tour. Um, I went and toured public works. 
Um, and I think that those are the two I did. I didn't do any. Yeah, I think I just did public safety. Nancy but again, Crowley from the library. Mm. Yeah, there might be some things that Tom feels like with senior staff, he may want to do like if he has a staff meeting that happens around that time where again, counselors can come and just get more introduced to who's who oh, yeah. because I've heard some like I don't know counselor Cushing like a, somebody mentioned that it, it took them a long time before they finally met like autumn or somebody and it's like well you well, should know who autumn is yeah and honestly I know who she is now but I've never been formally introduced right. to her. I gotcha yeah. and so I would we say the other thing I'm thinking of is that when I went to the fire department they had a meeting and a slideshow and a tour. And then, uh, of course, Chief Holmquist gave me the personal tour of his side of the shop. Yep. And then we went and played cops and robbers for a while, which was very fun because we actually thought we had a robber. <laughs> and, but I think that, you know, and my regret is I wanted to do it all the time, and he was open to it. In fact, he's even open to let you go out to the shooting range, which is still on my list. But my point is that that was a very positive experience yeah. and I think beneficial to them because I had a real clear picture mm -hmm. of what they were what they were doing. I agree. So okay. So conversation definitely to be continued and enhanced at our October meeting. And I'll come with more that we awesome. can talk about. Thank you. Can I throw out another recommendation? And I was joking about it, but now I am kind of serious. Should we do, yeah. given the fact that we have three outgoing counselors, particularly Jean Marie and Don, who have served Don six years, Jean Marie, I don't even know how long because I know it's just been a long time. It, I feel like it would be good to do something to acknowledge their service before they leave. I don't know if, again, this is maybe for council leadership, like if there's space where we don't necessarily need a workshop but again we could maybe have a reception before a council meeting just to kind of have cake and celebrate i love cake or pizza because i love pizza too and we know there's some great pizza in scarborough so again i'm just thinking like yeah i you think know. that's a great idea let me bring it up at leadership um i'm sure that tom would be happy to facilitate something even if like you said even if we just did it at five o'clock and had a reception that you know, where we all just have some food together before the meeting. And that's a good reminder for me too, that that would be a good human interest story for the newsletter too, of just their years of service. Yeah. Okay, any other town council um, planning? Okay. Uh, nope. Sorry, I, I have one more. Oh, go for it. Are we going to have a booth or a table, or do we need people at the Sustainable Scarborough Day? I don't know if I said that right. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, be because Sustainability Committee is having a table, um, I didn't know really necessarily what town council role would be to have our own table. So what are your thoughts on whether or not council can or should? I mean, I, I know feel the conservation like, commission will be there. Like, uh, like our environmentally centered community um, groups, like our volunteer committees, are all going to be there anyway. I just feel like it's always good for us, especially at these forums, to like have a presence, even if that presence is the liaisons supporting the committees that are there or getting commitment from the council that we plan to show up, at least be there for 30 minutes and say hello and thank people for taking the time. Like, I, I just always feel like these are good forums for us to be visible and be present and just let them know like who's, who's around. And I think with the land bond and the commitment we have to sustainability, climate change, et cetera, like I just feel like it's a good thing to be at. The open space plan, I'm not sure how that ties into it, the vulnerability assessment. Like, I don't know if those are all under the sustainability umbrella. Sometimes right. they, they merge in my brain. But um, again, I just think there's things that are important to us that we could be there and help discuss too. Okay. 
yeah, let me think about um, what a council, um, maybe we could come up with some kind of activity or something, John, um, to, to at least have as like a conversation starter um, at our table. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to, to stand at the council table. I'm gonna be floating around. Um, I told Jamie that I would be there as the liaison to um, sustainability anyway. Um, and so I'm happy to be, you know, designated town counselor um, for a little while. Um, but let's let's try and think of something that we could have at our tables, even if it was just like a, a quick straw poll or, you know, a, a poster board where people could put their ideas on sticky notes or just something to kind of mm -hmm. generate some conversation at our table so that we're not just standing there. Um, I know I agree. you're very good at making small talk, but not all of the counselors are super comfortable <laughs> yeah. doing that. Yeah. Or again, I mean, we don't we don't necessarily have to have a a booth, but just knowing that, like, I'm assuming you and Karen will be there. And again, if we just encourage people to show up, wear their badge if they have it and their sweater because it might be cold enough, and we can just say, like, just again, we aspire to like have a presence and talk with oh. folks. Sure. Yeah, I think it's good to show face. What's the date? October it's the, 6th. Yeah. It's a Sunday from 10 to 2. At the Wentworth School. I'll put it on my lit on my list to um email the council and at least make sure it's, you know, get it on people's calendars and send them the details in the flyer. And then I'll touch base with everybody and see who's going to be around and who's maybe planning on being there and then see if we have enough interest to do a table and whatever. But I can I can definitely be the coordinator for that. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so with that, I will turn it over to item five, which is um, staff communications updates. And I know Allison has a bunch of stuff for us today. Yes, um, and we can focus on, sorry, the text is so small. And sorry, John, I didn't have, I printed out my updates, but don't have it on the screen, but I'll speak to each of them. Um, so just as a brief overview, kind of going off of what I did last meeting about just giving what the communications is, calendar is looking like for the next couple of months. Um, my focus has been on now that the, referendums are approved for the ballot. I'm going to, um, for being placed on the ballot, I'm going to be putting out, developing more content around the police cameras, the fire truck, and the land bond, um, just making sure that voters are aware of those. So I have spots um, in the upcoming leader in the no sections for those. Um, I'm going to be doing a, um, a video with the fire department and the police department on each of theirs, just a very short I'm going the Instagram real route this time instead of like the two minute um, more formal video. So trying to just get in people's faces so that they see that. Um, and so yeah, next coming up next month, I'll be and even next couple of weeks, I'll do, be doing more about the election. And once I get the content developed, we'll have that voter guide that goes out in October. Um, so I'll have stuff for that. Speaking of, I want to see if any counselors were up for doing um, a go out and vote video. I know you did it in the past, but I'm happy just to again. If yeah, want to put that out there. Sure. Great. Um, While you're pausing here, I just want to make yep. a note that in your discussions of the land bond now, because the council has voted to recommend it, then you can make a full throat of that. We that's a good point now that it has the recommendation well, on it. So that's a dis and that's distinct from the fire truck and the campus. Where we're more informing. But, um, okay, uh, that would be good coming from the voice of a counselor then um, to kind of hear that specific recommendation. I can speak to the information about the land bond and what it's done in the past and give more context and say that the council has recommended it. Um, but if we want to do anything, maybe a quote from one of us that can kind of, that could be good. And your article that can put something, I nominate Councillor Cushing. Me too. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so speaking of that, yeah, it's, uh, for police and fire, I'm having each of them do the article. So for the land bond, I'm going to draft it, but I'll share it out to the appropriate parties so that it's kind of a communal effort and we make sure we have it the way we want it to look. Um, and I have Karen Shoup noted as someone to check in with on that. But yeah, I'll be sure to add a quote from the counselor in that. Um, I don't know if that's also an opportunity for a quick video if a counselor wanted to like be at Pleasant Hill Preserve or like one of the um, preserves that's been supported by land bond funds in the past, that might be a good like angle to take. I thought it was really good, April, when you did it in a video, yeah, right? You did. Yeah. 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 The council corner live. Yeah. So something else like that. Um, so yeah, I'll be working on that for the next um, few weeks. Simultaneously, we have the open space plan and the vulnerability assessment still underway. I know they've had some uh, neighborhood meetings and I'm just keeping in touch with Jamie about that and making sure that it doesn't um, fall off of communications. So that's ongoing. Um, the community center, we're pretty much wrapped up with now that the presentation has been given with the final feasibility study. Um, but I do want to work with Todd and getting one summary article together just so we have it and that the website is updated. So yeah, I'm not if we really could, if we could somehow more, if we could somehow like merge that into the conversation of prioritizing the priorities, like yeah, that's I think good, that'll yeah. be good. That's because, a good segue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's a good way for me to keep talking about it because I haven't had time to really get that article, full summary article wrapped up, but it seems like the farther it goes, the less relevant it is. So yeah, that's a good time to back. circle yeah. it back. Yep. Um, and I mentioned election coming up. So those are what I'm working on now. Um, is there anything from a council, from your meetings and agendas that stand out, something that I'm missing that should be on there? It's also a lot, so I'm trying to really make sure that I'm developing good content for these and not getting like lost in the weeds. But. The transportation study, I think, is going to be. I didn't hear you mention that Update specifically. On that. I know fall is. They've been saying fall is the time frame, but I haven't heard a clear update. That's probably post election. Okay. Maybe new new council perhaps more so just given where they're at and all the other priorities. I'm trying yeah. to think if there's anything else. Um, I know the school building committee, they're working on phase two. So that's something that I'll just support their efforts with, but that's on my radar. Okay. Um, we will talk about this communications guide, I believe later on in the agenda with the yeah. mention of the framework. So I'll skip that for now, but um, that is something that we we're going to talk about, I think, in our August meeting, but I was, um, I, with that being canceled, I sent it out to all of you, so you should have that. Yeah. Um, the final site app is something on my list that I don't know if we, we've talked about this months before, but um, I have regular check-ins with Brian Butler, our webmaster, and um, he, so with our new website that we've had for the past couple of years, it's um, the host or the website company, it's called Final Site, and um, something that they offer is an app that it's basically the website, everything that's on the website, but in app form. And it's more focused on um, like communications and messaging. It's not as much of like utilizing it as you would use the website necessarily, because for that, you could just like go onto the web browser on your phone. Um, but it's more of like a quick access point to see the latest town news and like any news posts that I put. Um, it has um, texting capabilities and notification capabilities um, so that if we ever added a new um, news post, someone could get notified about that, for example. Um, also, our town calendar that's on the website, um, it's formatted in a mobile-friendly way in the app. So it's an opportunity that um, I know we've talked about it before, potentially having our own town app. And it's an opportunity to use something that already exists and is established and is um, linked already with our website just to kind of like streamline that process so if we did want to further consider going with this route of an app for um another channel of communications um that is one 
direction that we could go. And um, it's an added cost from the website, but it's also seems like an easy, um, easy direction to go because it's right there. Do you know how much? I don't know how much. Um, and that would be the next step is that I could do a demo. Um, IT would set up a demo with myself and Liam to meet with Final Sight and learn more about it. Well, Allison, I'm holding in my hand here. I'm a proud member of the city of Garden Grove. God knows where Garden Grove is. But I have their app. And when I open it up, um, what does it do? It right off the top, it gives me six things. Easy, free, bulky drop-off item at Louise Lake. It basically gives the local teens invited to join the Action Collaborative. The park is temporarily closed. Maintenance. Boutique crafters wanted, uh, protect your dog. No, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. um, city's cooling center extended through Monday. But when I look at those, I say it's really quick to get through the headlines. Yeah. It allows me to click on just the headline I want to without scrolling. And then that stuff, as I read it, is one, two, three paragraphs with the highlights. And then if you want the details, you can click and yeah. it will take you to the website. And in there are all of your emergency, all of your phone numbers, mm -hmm. access, all of those things. And it essentially allows Gabro to be where everything else is, which is on your device. On device. Right. So yeah. I would strongly recommend it. You know, I feel guilty that I scan the newsletter, but I'll be honest, I don't read the whole thing. I don't have time to. I should. <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, that we need to move towards this type of thing. We need to get our head around the fact that we need to be brief, punchy, quick bites, direct. Yeah. And frequent, and yeah. I think that's the that's the other piece of this is that these types of communications allow you to put to basically build your newsletter a couple one item at a time as it comes up. I mean, it just seems to me to be a much more responsive process. And if you leave notifications turned on, which some people will, mm -hmm. then they will know when there's one new piece of information. So kudos for looking at it. I think I would be careful about just taking what our web company is offering because um, there are probably, when, when I researched it, the cost was about 15 grand a year, which seemed like payments. And, the, um, and there were multiple companies that offered this kind of thing that standalones would be integration. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. But anyway, thank, I mean, you. thank you for putting that on the agenda. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely think, Allison, just based on all of the skills and advancement that you've brought and, you know, the having the updated website and just the consistency that you've brought to the communication, like this is a next logical next step in terms okay. of being able to make everything so much more accessible to people. And as much as I have a love hate relationship with my phone, like the reality is we 99% of us carry our phone around. And if I want to know if route one is open or closed because it's high tide, like I would love to be able to just open the app and mm -hmm. have there be a notification right there that says, you know, route one is temporarily closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that I don't have to go on Facebook for my information, right? Like that's a lot of people aren't going on that too. They're going to other platforms. Yeah. 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 It's nothing that wouldn't exist somewhere else. It's more of just a centrally yeah. located yeah. spot that's easy to access. Yeah. Can can we give some thought to Allison or maybe you have some ideas? Like I love moving forward with the technology, but I think we know, at least based on the survey, that the most effective way people are getting their information was the um, leader. And personally, I know I've shared this before, I feel like with the change in management, which I totally get, it feels less Scarborough-y to me. And so do we need to start doing a quarterly mailer of things happening in town? Because if people 
are relying on things coming in the mail as their source with the leader and, you know, is there something there too that we might want to explore that again, I know it feels old school, but it feels like that's still an effective way to communicate and we don't do a lot of mailers or maybe when we do mail things like tax bills, we always think how we incorporate something else about the town in there that people have. I don't know if I gave that update, but I did reach out to um, a mailing company, print and mailing company um, for doing, it's like an 11 by 17 that's folded into a standard eight and a half by 11. And then it's folded again as a mailer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just getting a cost estimate on that. I think I was thinking twice a year, but yeah, or quarterly. Um, and I think it, my next hurdle was just figuring out um, who, who we're mailing to, like if it's property tax addresses, but then it's not getting at people who live in apartments or it's missing maybe like the seasonal versus year round or something. So that was, that's still an ongoing thing that I am looking into is doing a mailer. Cause I totally agree with you. It's just a, another um, touch point to take what's already in the newsletter and pull out the biggest highlights for um, the season you can send out. Ooh. So I, I'll come back with an update on that. So along those lines, I just pulled up on my screen here with Gorham Times, and that is a real community newspaper. They use other folks' infrastructure, but it strikes me that it would be useful that it, in a town of our size to have a real newspaper, and I don't think it is the purview of the town's people or on the town council to do it, but I believe it would be useful to add it to our agenda in terms of influencing it getting done. When I look at the ad revenue coming in with Scarborough meeting, there's plenty to support it, and there is so much synergy in terms of high school uh, journalism stuff in terms of real coverage of our sporting events and our activities. I mean, there's tons of content. And the other is that it feels like a real opportunity to have objective observers who we would hope would be fair writing from that point of view about stuff that goes on in the town. Mm -hmm. And I started researching it and stopped, but my basic conclusion was that the infrastructure for these things is shared. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's not like, you know, printing is cheap. Um, it's essentially managing the content is really what you need to do. And it strikes me that we have plenty of it. So I'm not sure how to make that happen other than maybe start by taking a trip over to see the Gorham Times and find out what they're up to. But um, sorry, Scarborough leader, but um, you know, somehow to me, watching watching our online show and then you know, it um, it's, it could be much better. Um, and by the way, I, you know, I'm just remembering because um, this is what we folks do after a certain age is we remember stuff. And so I recall um, the journal transcript. Uh, which was owned by the Lewis family in Franklin, New Hampshire, a town of 17,000 people. And it reported all of the local news and just pretty much in the fashion that I described it. And I'm thinking, my goodness, if a town in the 60s could, with that population, could support a local newspaper, it seems to me that we could adjust that for inflation and accomplish the same kind of thing here or not. Twenty-two thousand. The local news is important. So, Great. End of speech. Um, just to go back to the final site app, one additional piece to that, and just to clarify, so the app is directly what's on the website, what's posted on the town news on the homepage, directly fed into the app. It's not like another thing that I would have to update, but it also is only that information. Um, so with that conversation, 
um, Brian and I, in speaking about the website, also talked about at the time that we upgraded to it, it has newsletter capabilities. So right now I use constant contact for our newsletters. And it, alternatively, I could switch over and start using um, the website companies and the website's newsletter capabilities. It's just a matter of, I would have to take all of our um, subscribers contact list, export it, and then move it into our, our own. Um, but I want to do more of a demo, but I think it could do everything that I can currently do. And if we are able to successfully do that, I see that as a really good improvement and progression of streamlining everything that our website um, also has a newsletter and it has this app. And so that um, it just makes it easier to notify people of an update. And then like if I'm developing a certain section of the newsletter, I could just like quick make that into a post on the website. Um, it's easier to track metrics because right now we uh, share constant contact with Sedco. So they're simultaneously sending out um, their own emails to their own list on there. So it's just a way of like bringing everything and tidying it up. Um, so that is something else I'm looking into um, with, with this app too. And I think that might even be the first step before the app because it just seems like an easy way to clean it up and it's already there. It's not an added cost. It's included with what our website is. So that's um, early stages of talking about. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to let you all know that um, last week I went to a conference called, um, the organization's called 3CMA, it's um, City County Communications, um, Marketing Communications Association. And um, their conference was last week in Texas and I got to meet a lot of people from across the country doing um, similar work that I'm doing. and. Um, some of the big takeaways um, were things that I already knew, but it's good to like hear about it and pick up on the trends, but a lot about like storytelling and um, getting those human experience and human interest stories from um, people on staff and sharing those out for the community. Um, they talked a lot about AI and using AI to like help generate content for your work. So that's something that I'm trying to think about more. And they talked a lot about um, doing de more data-driven storytelling. So ways that you can take um, survey data and use that more as part of the flow of day-to-day um, -day communication. So I want to be better about circling back to our survey and make sure that like I'm, I'm hitting all the high points that people want to hear about. Um, and another interesting uh, session that I went to, they were talking about um, just listening and the importance of listening and engagement. Um, and they called it no agenda listening sessions of it reminded me so much of Council Corner Live, um, but just creating a space for people that's not this three minute comment period. They said phase out three minute comment periods, but um, phase in these sessions where you have trained listeners, which is essentially like people who are on staff that are, or council who are just like trained to like withhold what they want to say and how to take the notes about what people are saying, what types of questions to ask. and um, create these breakout sessions for people to um, have a voice or have a space where they can vocalize them. But it made me just think about how we run the Council Corner Lives right now and um, just the opportunities, like how well that facilitated one went um, for the school project ahead of that. And um, just if there's some opportunity where, where we wanted to kind of like come up with some sort of exercise or like a set of questions that, um, creates more of like a facilitated dialogue, but also like a listening space mm -hmm. that could be a productive takeaway. Um, and they also spoke to surveying, which we do, but we could do it in a more, try to do like more segmented surveying throughout the year if we had a tool for that. Um, neighborhood events they talked about um, and just the importance of face-to-face -face interactions, which is when you brought up the sustainable Scarborough day and just like being a presence there, that made me think of that too. Um, but overall, it was a really good conference and gave me some good ideas and good um, reminders of what to what to focus on and just nice to be with a network of people doing similar work. That's great. Well, that just makes me wonder, um, as I sit and watch the three-minute show that could be really about me, if there was some way to structure that more in the context that 
that was from speaking of where somebody should be changed around where somebody is for you to say more about that it becomes more of a conversation i don't think it would take much more time and i think that i find it extremely frustrating uh, when people come there and say their three minutes and then have to sit here with my arms folded and sometimes things that are said you wish you could say say more about that that's interesting and other times you hear things that you think might be straight up false mm -hmm. and it's hard to find places following that in the agenda mm -hmm. where you can sort of push back on them so you can say anything you want but should you please limit yourself to things that are factual right. you know? so i don't know if we can do that but um, maybe in the next council we can discuss it mm -hmm. Any other updates, Allison? Nope, that's it for me. Okay, perfect. Um, this this conversation actually segues pretty nicely um, into item six, which is Councilor Corner Live takeaways. And I realized that Councilor Corner Live now is was several weeks ago because we canceled our August meeting. Um, but just as a refresher, we did hold a Councilor Corner Live the first week of August. Um, the topic was the land bond. And by my quick head count, um, there was upwards of 30 people in the room. Um, uh, counselors in attendance were myself, John and Karen. Um, we sat up behind the dais, which I, I prefer, it's funny, I prefer to have the Counselor Corner Lives at Town Hall in the sense that I like that space better than, than when we do it over at the Public Safety Building, because I don't like using the owl. But I also should have let the crew know um, that I wanted to set up more of like a welcoming conversation mm -hmm. space um, because by the time I got there, they had already set all the mics and stuff up at the dais. And so that was kind of a bummer for me. I didn't really like having to sit behind the dais because I felt like that set a tone that, you know, that we were being formal when that's the last thing I'm trying to do. Um, but overall, I felt like the conversation was fantastic. Um, even people that were uh, a little spicy with their comments came up to me afterwards and, and said, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. You know, I really like this format because I'm not limited to three minutes. Um, and so I still just continue to think that those events are a huge success. Um, one area of improvement is we created the um, Counselor Corner Live uh, evaluation form that Allison had for us. And I completely dropped the ball on having a plan for having residents fill it out. And so we got to the end of the time and I said, you know, there are exit forms at the back of the room. I would really appreciate if you would take the time to fill out the exit survey. And John, how many people did you get for the exit survey? I got two forms. <laughs> um, and so, you know, definitely something to consider uh, for next time is is just having a plan to have people fill those out rather than just kind of tacking it on to the end. Um, people did stay and and continue to chat for quite a while after the forum was over, which is great. I love that, you know, it's it, it, even if we set the time and say, OK, eight o'clock is is our stop. I love to see that the residents were still engaged and having conversation. Um, but I, I, we did not get the survey data or the data that I was looking for with the exit forms because I just dropped the ball on having people fill them out. Question. Yeah, absolutely. Did you get, um, other than the usual suspects? We did. did. You, did you get much negative stuff about the ball? Oh, I thought you were gonna say, do we have new faces? Um, we, it was a mix. I, John did a really great job um, at one point with kind of taking the temperature of the room. And so he asked everyone in the room to please put their hand in the air and then put it down when, as he reached a threshold that would make you uncomfortable for supporting the bond. And when he did it, I think there, the room kind of 
we had had a tone of, of kind of being against the bond um, in the early comments. And so when we did it, I think the people who were not as supportive of the bond were very surprised to see how many people had their hands in the air for a very long time as John kind of took the temperature of the room. And it was a really good kind of eye-opening experience for me to see that the room was not lopsided. It was, it was very much um, evenly distributed sure. between people who were there to encourage us not to support the bond versus people who were there to very much support the bond. You know, it's, it's, that's interesting to me because I mean, it's clear that the bond supporters were organized, but I, I didn't see or hear any negatives in the email or phone calls. Mm -hmm. So so I guess it's good that we provided that form, but it's a surprise to me um, that, we are, that people in opposition didn't come before us or send us emails or those kinds of things, mm -hmm. but they could come to a special event for, mm -hmm. which is weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens with the vote. Yeah, so my my thoughts, I, I thought it was a great forum. Um, I, I One thing I was thinking, like, and this came from some of the feedback forms, you know, sometimes the people who have the most experience with these forums tend to lead and drive the initial conversation. And so a suggestion we may wanna consider at the next meetings is one, giving everybody in the room an opportunity, maybe through some polling to kind of be like, who's here for the first time? Who, who yeah. is supportive of the topic at hand and who is not supportive and just kind of get a sense of the room and then maybe even allow some of the first timers to share their views first, because the people who have the experience, you know, they, some of the feedback in the forum was like, they're very comfortable and that they felt like we allowed them to speak multiple times before someone else knew was allowed to speak. And so to me, it's just trying to balance and, and make sure that people know when they come to these, it's very inviting. Everybody's gonna have a chance to speak and, you know, again, like we just need to manage that a little bit. So a little, a little bit goes back to what Allison said of like, not overstructuring these, but just thinking of some structure that allows for everybody, no matter where they sit on this, have the same opportunity to present. And I think sometimes the first timers may not want to talk first. They may want to just be there to observe because they've never seen one, but making sure that we're always going back to the group and say, okay, we want to hear from somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Like, yeah. you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. I wonder if room setup might be uh, something we could experiment with just as a way to put everyone on equal footing. You know, the chambers are just a bit odd because the, the dais kind of gives this impression of not superiority, but you know, well, leading the conversation. Being formal. That, yeah. 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 Um, not so much over in the classroom in public safety. I think it's a little more disarming. Uh, but I think maybe just if you can manage it, maybe putting things up in a circle form rather than kind of yeah. uh, classroom form, just to put everyone at, at, on an equal. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I think in that sense too, not sit, not having the council sit together, mm -hmm. right? Like we could sit throughout the crowd. Again, just to kind of give it that feel that we're all equal residents there mm -hmm. to have a conversation. Yeah, I think there's a bunch of small touches that we could do um, just to continuously improve the experience for us and for our, for our residents. I really, I really love the feedback form. Um, and so I'm committed to making sure that we incorporate that better um, for next time, because I, I do, I think that's a really key yeah. piece of information that we've been missing is getting feedback after. Yeah. And one, one thing I think, one, one thing that, um, I do think we have to be clear with folks is like, and it goes back to what Allison said too, like some of this is listening and we're listening. It doesn't mean that that particular focus group to some extent is going to be driving a lot of action right um like there was one comment that somebody made where they said something along the lines comment of, right at us yeah 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 where they were saying if you why like are you going to actually do something different because of what we have to say and my my thoughts are i'm listening to what you have to say i'm considering that but but it may not change my mind 
in terms of what I think needs to happen. And so there's a difference between doing this to listen and inform us, but also sometimes it may change my mind, but like, this is more to get a little bit more insight, have a conversation, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to do exactly what you want at the end result. If that's, if you're here to try and sway us to kind of go a direction that you want us to go, you may leave unhappy because that's not really why we're here. We're not here to, to necessarily change our minds. We're here to listen, observe, try and get a better balance of what people feel. And again, if we only have one group of people that is very against something and it's a small showing, that's, it's hard to say that that is like, you know, a, a, a representation of the entire community. So it's just trying to figure out how we balance that too. When we set the stage of like why we're here and what this is forum is for and what will happen or not happen as a result, just to set expectations. Cause I just don't want people coming thinking like, if you come to a counselor corner live, the, the counselors who are there are going to now do exactly what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's important to convey to folks that numbers matter and that, you know, we have a big town here and that this is a forum where people come to express their opinions, but it might not be a bad thing to remind folks that, um, that they can come to council meetings, that they can tell their neighbors and friends who share their opinions to reach out and contact us. And I think we've seen two recent examples that connect during the uh, land bond, mm -hmm. where groups of people who felt very strongly about this got themselves organized mm -hmm. and showed up at meetings and wrote emails and so forth. And which is why I was surprised to hear that there are people in town who are not so keen on the idea. Well, great, they'll get a chance at development. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's important to continually reinforce this notion that uh, representatives represent, and we try to take into consideration what the silent folks are saying. But if you show up, right, call, that gets extra points in sure. the deliberation. I, I would well, also note that this topic was probably 70% to the finish line. So there was actually something tangible. Mm -hmm. It was actually already in process in front of council, whereas I'm thinking of some of the prior topics, they were more formative, right? They were more kind of a German idea. Right? Yeah, um, short-term rentals. Right. That, that right. Here's kind a, of gave us a sense of where people were um, what they what their concerns and fears were in terms of yep. what the the direction the council was going to go, but we were at let you know but level you're, zero. You were able to time. tell them how to continue to be mm -hmm. engaged. Like this mm -hmm. is going to come through more formally in ordinance and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But this yep. was further along in its yeah, kind of process. Tom, yeah. that's such yeah. an interesting point because yeah. I was chatting with Karen yesterday on a variety of topics, and we talked a bit about the connector, mm -hmm. and she said something to me very interesting. She said, well, early on, I think Peter was a big fan of what he called the kitchen table conversations. And I think he went out and talked to a lot of people over the kitchen table before the thing was really baked. This is Peter Mills. Peter Mills, yes. yeah. Well, over the kitchen table, it's pretty easy for everybody, for anybody sitting across the table to find something that they like in the conversation and, and you know, unless they're vehemently opposed. But to your point, you know, once the rubber starts to meet the road or the uh, current alignment, as the case may be, uh, then, you know, people get, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people wake up, I guess that's a better way of saying it. Well, impact, yeah, that in that example, impacts are better understood, right? Oh, right. it's coming this close to my right. house, and what yeah. does that mean? And yeah, yeah. There's yeah. an interchange here, I didn't realize that. So right. it, not surprisingly, uh, it's touched the nerve. Right. Yeah, but I think I, there, I don't think there's a re right recipe or formula. I think this was uh, equally good for it, it was just at a different point in the process. Um, more importantly, it it, it gave uh, it was another opportunity for folks to be engaged and express their views. Yeah. And that's yeah. important in and of itself. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think to Don's point, like we should always encourage people in closing how to stay involved, stay engaged, what the next steps could be. Um, I, I was really proud that one person that was at the Counselor Corner Live, I think it was her first one, 
And then she came and spoke yeah. at the public yeah. meeting. And so even though it was an end of one, I was like, I was actually, when she was up there, just so happy she was there and wanted to thank her for taking the time to come to Counselor Corner, learn. But then when we told her that there was a follow-up and she could come, and we told the entire group, like, it would have been nice to see more of those people show up and say, hey, came to Counselor Corner, I wanted to make a statement in front of the full council because I really support this or I really right. don't support it or whatever. And you can tell she was a, a, a newbie to the process and seemingly apprehensive at the Council of Corner Live, at least initially, because of all the other speakers kind of dominating, but did speak. And then did, she seemed to really have a level of confidence when she was yeah. in front of council. That I was agree. my sense. Yeah. So those little um, moments are what I'm proud of. Yeah, I wonder, you know, you guys have created this great continuity. Um, I'd love you to be here for the rest of your, um, as long as you could be, but that's not likely to happen. It might be helpful for us to start to codify this just to for consistency. And what I mean by that is um, someone, staff or council, provides some opening remarks just to kind of level set what this is and what this isn't, but kind of the forum. And then a closing piece, which talks about how to stay engaged. And that's going to vary depending on what the topic is and where it is in process. Uh, but having that level of consistency, and I think naturally you guys have done that, but yeah. might be good just to get it in writing so we yeah. continue that practice. Yeah, I agree. I can put that on the agenda for October. Um, and I'm happy to kind of just rough out a, an outline of, of how we've been kind of handling them and then also include, I think it would be good, Allison, to, if I'm going to rough out, you know, kind of a, a not an, a, an anti-agenda for how these meetings go, mm -hmm. I can also just put the, the typical communications timeline that we've been using um, and the tools that we use to promote just to yeah, kind of have it all in one place. Package. It's like a package. Yep. Yeah. I also appreciated that, um, to your point about new faces being there, Scarborough Land Trust sent out an email that morning um, to inviting people to come. So it's just nice, like, if there ever is an organization or some somewhat related, yeah, talk um, about that all the time. to help yeah. have them help promote it, just get some more wider audience in the room. Excellent. I don't um, think you've ever had a bad experience they're all a little nope. different right no nope. uh, there's some constants but uh it, it seems to me that they've all been successful in one regard or another yes. yep. what was the first one do you recall growth, growth. growth. That, that was, was, a big, oh, that was the one that was the yeah. 60 yeah. person yeah. one yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we started big <laughs> yeah yeah one word <laughs> um Item seven on our agenda today is the communications framework that Allison has prepared. I wanted to give her the opportunity to kind of go through and present it to us as a committee. Um, it's an outstanding culmination of what she's already been doing. Um, but I think, it, you know, it was really driven by conversations that this committee had w when we first, you know, reformed. Um, and so I think that this is great to kind of have Allison present it to us and then give her any feedback that we might have and then talk about um, how we want to use what Allison has here um, and, and maybe bring it back to the council-centered conversation toward the end. We have about 20 minutes left. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'll give a brief overview, but then I would like to leave some time just to kind of go through it more if you all have access to looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had sent it ahead of time, but this is largely based on a template from another city that I was pulling examples from and just trying to think about what in um, their documents related to what we um, have talked about as our priorities and goals. Um, but even zooming out more broadly than that, like we haven't really talked about from a communications perspective, like what our vision is and our goals. I mean, we kind of do like for the year, um, but thinking bigger picture than that. So this was a really good exercise to um, putting a name down, putting words down to like what we've been doing and just kind of giving more direction. So um, it just opens with the overview background about the town. Um, it goes into priorities and goals. And these are the ones that I largely um, could relate to from that 
draft or from the other template I was looking at, but um, the first priority and goal is um, being strategic about, I think we might have reworded this one too, but being strategic about what we're putting out, trying to be more proactive and we're the ones leading the narrative rather than um, being more reactive to situations as they arise. Um, transparency and accessibility, those have always been big ones since I started of just making sure the information is available to people. Um, we've talked a lot about um, town council and the role of communications, either with your own um, communications framework and efforts or just like how it feeds into ours. And so this one isn't as much focused on town council, but we did um, put this um, as a goal in here about having a, a town council that's engaged and we have this um, communications committee, things like that, and then community engagement. Um, being a core piece of the work and why we're doing it. Um, and then lastly, just from more from a marketing standpoint, brand identity identity, and um, making sure that visually what we're putting out is consistent. Um, so that kind of relays to into our areas of focus, the next page. And then um, this next page is on guiding principles. So yeah, the priorities and goals are more broad. And then this kind of narrows in about like when we are communicating, like what are the ways that we're doing it? And the first one is um, we tell our own story. So what I was saying before too about like, we set the stage for what our message is. Other, there's other interpretations of it, but we need to identify early on with whatever project or topic we're working on, like how we are going to put that information out and like what the message is behind it and then um, make it clear before it can be reinterpreted um, and just have a, a clear stance on, on a topic. Um, we've also talked about being proactive versus reactive. What if counts as a crisis and when do you kind of switch gears into responding to something? Is it when it's misinformation or misleading to a large group of people or do you just stay the course on um, what the goals are? So that's noted in there. Um, because I came on as the first communications role before that all the departments were doing their own communications and so largely that's been a helpful um, standpoint of even still like each department has its own communications efforts that stream into the larger picture, but also just giving them the power to be able to um, identify what their own needs are. So that guiding principle is about decentralizing the way communications operates, like that each department still has their own um, responsibilities and knows what's effective communications that they need to share out. Yeah, one, one question about that with yeah. respect to, I guess, managing the brand for all intents and purposes mm -hmm. and the overall messaging. So it certainly makes sense that, for example, the assessor's office develops mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. But my understanding is they develop that in conjunction with you, it flows through you so that they're more responsible for the information and they're more responsible for the look, the feel, the check in on the message. Is that fair right? To say? Yeah, you're right. They're not, they're not operating as lone wolves. Correct. Like yeah, we still have our centralized channels and then um, relying on them to be able to provide the information and make it so that it's understandable. And, Yes, it is. I can't underscore how important that is. Uh, Elson's done a tremendous job of um, looking at a, what can be a complex topic, whether it's the assessor or whether it's me. If I'm asked a question, I'll often provide an answer that's way too detailed and, and in the weeds. And it really misses the real message it needs to get across. And I think that's one of Elson's many talents is to be able to kind of synthesize and understand where is the true message in all of this. And we also try to provide all that detail for those that want to dive deep, but we can't lose the fact, uh, lose sight of the fact that there's a, a basic message that we want to convey. Can I, can I make a suggestion as maybe one, like one, a... John, just let me one, one, second, one, one yeah. quick before I, before I lose this, that 
this morning for other reasons, I was looking at the survey that one of the questions was value for tax dollars. And it seemed to me that the overall response was kind of neutral in that department. And I was thinking about that in the context of this discussion and strategically, what are we trying to get across? And we consistently said that we need to be informative, et cetera. But it seems to me that one stake you could put in the ground in terms of messaging is underscoring the value that you're getting through tax dollars. Mm -hmm. finding ways to come back to that because that is sort of your job in a sense. In other words, it's not political. It's essentially sort of, uh, you know, I just remember in, uh, going to school in Boston, you couldn't sit on the park bench without seeing Kevin H. White, mayor city of Boston, <laughs> everywhere. I mean, he, it, it was more about him politically, but the point is that they made an ongoing effort to tie his leadership with progress. Another way of saying that is to tie all of the stuff we're doing to people who are fully to build in some way. And that's, I don't think that's in every case, but I think that anytime there's an opportunity to kind of answer the question, what have you done for me lately? It's not a bad thing to do. Okay, now I'm going to so I was just going to say, I think it would be really great, Allison, and you might already have it, and maybe it's just an appendix in this document, but like, what are all of the different things people could follow, subscribe to? Because again, I'm on the, the police, fire, um, community services Facebook page, or I follow those. I get the community service newsletter. I get the school newsletter. Like, I think it would just be good to know what are all those options? So that way residents can decide. Like I know some people really wanna know what the police department is saying and that's what they wanna to subscribe to. And if that's all they wanna do, that's fine. But I think having an inventory and knowing what all of those active channels are. So that way, even just for us, we have like visibility and know that those are all out there because we may not be involved in all of them and we may want to be. That is a question for the app discussion as well, yeah. isn't it? Because again, that notion of having to look in six different places mm -hmm. and subscribe yeah. to six different things, if the app format allows you to integrate those things, condense it, quick hits, uh, it would probably be uh, a big improvement. I mean, it strikes me our town newsletter tries to kind of take the best of all, right? It calls Summarize, kind of, yeah. summarizes kind of the big topics. Sure. Um, there's certainly additional content that may be specific to an individual. Um, but I understand your point. We ought to make people aware that there's multiple different uh, avenues that they want to know more. Mm -hmm. I just I'm still waiting to... for the town manager blog, Tom. I know. <laughs> I'll start tweeting. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Live tweeting during council meetings. <laughs> yeah, that's what the people it, want. I think my face says it all, doesn't it? I, <laughs> I'm losing my poker face the older, <laughs> the older I get. But back to Don's point about kind of value for your tax dollar. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I would love that we kind of build this case and we don't have to say it to them in so many words that people are left with the sense that, and, and for me, this communication is all about is demonstrating that we're listening to you and here's what we're doing about it. And then let pe people, you know, judge for themselves whether we're dealing with the right stuff and our responses are are kind of brutally legal. And that takes a sustained effort over years. Well, I think I think that makes sense. And I guess what I would say that is that a measurement of that is whether or not, if we truly believe, if we could, if we wanted to objectively say, yeah, this is the this is the value. But I take your point about you know, the obvious bumping. But it would seem to me that a worthwhile objective would be to see if we could move that needle in the survey, uh, regardless of you know, one way to do it is just to begin with, with the end in mind and mm -hmm. look and see if the collective stuff yeah. that you're talking about actually makes that result, or do we need to do something more? Because my you know my insiders view of it now is I'm getting hell of it. Okay, but yeah. uh, yeah, well, the, the yeah, metrics we've used in the past have come from a variety of sources, whether it's satisfaction of staff and services, to some extent, satisfaction with their elected officials. I think all of those things are data points that help 
yeah. give an indicator of how our residents think we're doing collectively. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, just the last guy. I'm picking up on these are good points because I just want to make sure that those themes are incorporated in in here too. Just like the ways that we try to incorporate that into our messaging. Um, and then the last note I had on here for under the guiding principles was strong themes versus scattered messages. And that's basically just kind of like to the point I was saying about um the the messages where they're coming from and where you find them and just making sure that there's some overarching consistency and um, that it's not just loose messaging here and there, but we kind of have a plan with each of our topics and how we roll them out and that they're continually being circled back to and not just one off. Um, the next page came from a resource guide that's already an established. I didn't change anything with this. This is from um, a reference that already exists. So these are the public engagement core principles. So I won't go into those. Um, and then more Scarborough specific, taking a look at our target audiences. So it was just a way to, it was a good exercise in breaking down who are we re reaching out to and um, yeah, who our community partners are. And then um, John mentioned just all of these channels of where you can subscribe to. And I have a list here of um, different outlets that we use. And some of these are more aspirational or just opportunities. Like um, we don't, we're, I, I, we were on Twitter, but we don't actively use that as much, but police and fire use that more. Um, and Nextdoor and LinkedIn are other areas that we don't use, but could use. Um, but I made a note that it could be good to somehow indicate what areas up on here, there are um, to uh, subscribe to other channels. Um, and then the next page is just how we're tracking our metrics and how the success rate of each of these outlets. So those are some standard ones that are listed, web page views, new builder subscribers, things like that. Um, and then these last couple pages were things that we've talked about more in the beginning of the year that it was good to put into paper um, or um, pen to paper about like what the process is for when we do have a topic of communication, then what? And making sure, I think for so long, I've just been kind of working with that staff person and adapting to like what, how they work and um, just kind of like going with their plan. Um, but this is a more organized way to have this framework template and then I go to them and um, making sure that I'm following the same process, referencing those communications channels and um, establishing a timeline and what are the key points that you want in your um, in your content. Um, and if I just do that with each staff person, then it creates more of that um, consistency. So that last page um, talks about how that process works. First meeting with the staff and then getting into that plan, reviewing it and then circling back and making sure that it was successful and what we might adapt. And then- I'll just, just note, and I think it works that way most often you're working with an individual number of staff, but on some of the larger topics that we're trying to understand what is the message you want to get across, it's not uncommon for Liv and I and, and others to kind of uh, have a conversation and the end result is really identifying what that message is and mm -hmm. then Allison does her magic and executes on it. Mm -hmm. So um, we try to be nimble and react to the topic of the day. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I can find that like it can get lost in the weeds of something else um, coming up. So it's just a good way to like keep myself organized too. And yeah, like you said, it's not always like just one particular project that's coming up, like Reval is a good example that was very helpful and um, a clear, obvious um, project that's happening. But other times it's more of a concept or um, like an idea of like some of that survey data of like what uh, the residents are interested in, like how can we um, speak more to um, just more of a, a concept and not as much of a project. So that's kind of like the next phase of what we could get into. Um, and then we've all, gone through this framework and we did that exercise with the land bond. Um, and that was a good way for me to kind of like see how we could use that. Um, and from there, I think I kind of 
change the size of the boxes a little bit just to give more room for some things and less for others. And then um, I found what was missing from it because we just had that first page was that I didn't really have like a place to put the timeline of like the next step. So I just kind of created a space on the back page of a framework that um, is more where I can outline um, when to start incorporating like how many social media posts and when what newsletters is going in. Um, so I did use this in working with police and fire on their referendum items. And um, that's been really helpful for me just to like reference back of like, okay, what are these key points that I need to be incorporating in my messaging? So um, that's already been something that I've incorporated. Well, the other thing, Allison, is that on the other side of this, what you could end up with is essentially a portfolio that says he will write intentions, his links, references to what we actually did, here's our evaluation. And for a couple of things, it would be an easy reference for when you look back and see what we did before. Mm -hmm. uh, could resume build it for you. Uh, oh, oh, we should know that I was idea. Say. <laughs> and so uh, the only thing that I see missing from this, you probably get it from the timeline, but it would be useful, I think, to spell it out is what are the chances? The tools. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, whether it's community organizations or whatnot. Just yeah. think that because over time, we'll sort of learn, we'll learn more about what's affecting that. Yeah. As long as you're on page 12, what you be the first to say what one thing about thank you for. Yeah, I think I didn't put the channels on there because I'm like, oh, I just use the ones I use, but it's true that it changes based on who we're talking about. Um, yeah, so thanks for letting me go through that and just a good good for me to have something that I can refer to, but I would ask of all of you just to kind of at this point it's on here but i haven't gone through it with a fine tooth comb but if there's anything that we feel is missing from it and just like typos and things like that would be helpful yeah go ahead john no i think this is wonderful i think it's perfect i only saw one typo on page Great. seven you, that i think and under transparency and, and trust, I think impact and action is supposed to be its own section. Oh, so it looks you. like there's just something there. But I, the, the one suggestion I have maybe, and it's just tiny, is under public engagement on page nine. Like the one thing I want to get the community to hopefully better understand, and I know it's not going to happen, but I would like this to happen is like, you know, People say they wanna be involved in the decision-making process. And a lot of times it starts with our citizen committees, it goes to our council committees, and then it goes to town council. So I feel like kind of the public engagement piece, I'm missing a little bit of, you know, we call it town council meetings, but I feel like making sure people know, like it usually happens pretty early, but people don't attend those meetings because they're volunteer-led committees to be advisory to the council. But then usually it goes to ordinance or it goes to fine, it goes somewhere that is still forming. And then once it gets to the council, it's pretty baked. And so if people, if one of the problems we're trying to solve with this is to help people feel more engagement and involvement in the decision-making process, I think we just have to make sure that people understand that those are key engagement points where they're invited to come, they're public meetings, they can participate. We've recently gotten some emails from um, some people wanting easier ways to contact those people. I'm a little apprehensive, I think, about putting our volunteer committees in a position of having to be responsive to the public because I feel like that's our job or yeah. town staff's job as the liaison. So. I haven't responded to the emails we've gotten, but like in general, my perspective is that's why we have liaisons. If the public wants to get a hold of a committee or has a question, they come to the council and the staff liaison and we can get the answer. But like, I just don't want our volunteers now to have to be responsible for responding to emails or feeling like, because in my opinion, they're here specifically to represent their views and expertise, not 
to be political, and I feel like I don't want to put them in a position of being political. Meetings are public, is that correct? And yeah. You go to a committee meeting, right? Yeah. So show up. Right. Yeah. So I just feel like in the public engagement, we might want to call out citizen committee meetings, council committee meetings. Right. Just add those two bullets just to make it clear and just let people know that that's generally how the decisions work. Yeah, I think that's the key point because it's at the committees, they're, they're almost always more informal. Yeah. Um, even if they don't have input, just to listen to the substance, the, the discussion, it will give folks a sense of how they got to the final recommendation. You know what I mean? So that, I think you're right. The, the, the early conversation is often most instructive, I think. So one thing that I would like to see, Allison, this is amazing. And as this becomes final and we, and I, I did not catch the typo. I'm, I'm also uh, a horrible editor, so I'm not surprised that I didn't see it. But uh, as this becomes final, I would love to have a discussion at leadership um, to give Allison an opportunity to come and present even just briefly to the council, um, just so that everyone is aware of the work that went into this, that the communications committee, I admittedly were more loosey goosey than some of the other council committees even. Um, but, you know, there is substantive work. There's collaboration with staff that's happening. And I think that it would be really beneficial for the whole council to understand our communications process, especially if we have counselors who have not served on the communications committee before. And so I think that this is really important. And I would love to give Allison some time um, at a council meeting to present this when it is um, ready for prime time. And this is something that runs through everything yeah, we do. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In one respect or another. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pleased to make some time on the agenda. Okay. Probably not a full blown workshop, but maybe. Yeah. Tag on with my manager's report. Yeah, I was going to say, put alert to what we do, which is like form comms or. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think that just about wraps up our time for today. Um, I've got a bunch of things that I will convey to Katie for future agenda items for October. Um, we do not have anybody on Zoom or in the room to make public comment this afternoon. So, with that, I will go ahead and ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, John, are you in favor? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you uh, next month. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.